Good afternoon. This is Dr. Bill White again with the American Orthodontic Society. And I'm going to do a video here just a little different from what we normally uh, do the videos. And I'm going to ask these questions. How did it happen? How did we come about to get the teeth straight? How did it come about that this malocclusion developed? and find out what caused it to develop and then why the thing took place like it did. Truding arch wire that we have came about by what happened in this particular case. So I want to get, get going on it and show you. Here is a young man's <coughs> picture and then if you notice he had a deep bite but after he just vanished from the office and didn't come back for about six months. And I, I may have seen him one time before he, after we put the braces on him, but he didn't show up anymore. It was six months before we saw this young man again, and he came in, and I want to show you what happened to his teeth. Now, these are two little arch wires we put on him. Both of them were kind of... Uh, intruding wires that bring the lower down and to pick the upper up. And the reason we put those in is because his bite was extremely deep here and you can hardly see his permanent teeth underneath there. Let me get this uh, going again. Like these teeth right here were down completely. Let's go back now. And you could not see his full lower teeth. The lower teeth were up here and actually touched the roof of the mouth. And the upper teeth were going way down. They hadn't dropped as much as the lower teeth had gone up, though, in this particular case. But his bite was closed. I mean, really deep. And I hooked it up and I put only, I banded these, uh, these six teeth in the front. This was 1971, 1971 when we started this. And we banded those teeth across here and banded his lower teeth. And I may have adjusted it one time, but that's the last that I saw of him for about six months. And we had these six-year molars back here banded, and we were working these wires off of the six-year molars up there. So let's, let's go ahead. Now, the man came back in the office after six months with just these two little wires in there, and these teeth right here that were down here at one time on the lower, these had raised, these had picked up, and the lowers had gone down simply from the force of this little arch wire that you, I'm going to show you here in a minute. Just a, a round wire, actually. And we worked off of the motor. In other words, one arch wire went in here. It had a little spring-like device on it. Up here, we brought it down, hooked it up to these. It was up in this area, and we brought it down, hooked it to the teeth, and it was picking the teeth up right here. Now, when you hooked it up, of course, the wire took a little bend like that and was going all the way around the mouth, and it raised these teeth from this point up to where they are now. Uh, except it wasn't all of the, uh, this going up. We had a wire down here. It went all the way around. We brought it up, hooked it to these teeth when they were way up in here. And this wire stayed in his mouth. He didn't tear it out or anything. And six months later, he came in. And then this is what we saw when the young man came in. Came in. So what caused this to take place and, and how did it take place? 
And that's what I want to show you in here. Now, if you go back and look at the six-year molars now, they're back here, you'll notice they, they kind of come down like this. In other words, the wire that was in here was up in this area. We pulled it down, and that's like prizing this tooth out. The tooth would tend to rotate some in this direction, and the mesial cusp of the teeth would come in contact here. The same thing down here. You raise the wire up, then it would raise the front of this up like that. And this is uh, what took place uh, during this time. Now let's take a, another look back here at this one. And you see where these, these wires were way up here. And we brought them down and they picked this up. And they, were, they came off the lower motor and came down and picked these up and took this down. Now there's exactly the same force going up in this direction on the teeth that's going this way, going down on the motors. And if you've got one force going one way, you'll have another force going the other way in there every time. And so there's the same force on the motors that are on these six anterior teeth. Same force here picking this six-year molar up that's putting these six anterior teeth down. Now, of course, you got two molars and you got six teeth over here. Now, these teeth did very little movement in those teeth. Now, they hardly moved. And that's what we take advantage of in a lot of these, like these class two things. Uh, people wear across here, hook up to the six-year molar. It doesn't bother the molar very much and corrects class two problems on young uh, kids all the time. This is a common thing. People are selling them now and making millions of dollars off of them, and they do work, and they work good because these six-year molars do that. Now, if you take the six-year molar out, and the second motor moves in its place, it does the same thing that the other teeth do like that. So let's go now back to this. You see that that motor moves very little. As it started down, and this one was starting up, they ran together right here. So the occlusion of these teeth biting together in here is the big reason that these teeth did not move. If the person had not chewed on those teeth at all, these would have to be down here somewhere. And this would be up there. And we would increase the vertical height of this young man's face if we did that. And it didn't increase. So this is the upper arch as we went in there. You can see we've just got molar bands, that's all we had, nothing on the bicuspids, and these teeth right here went up, and these stayed where they were. They didn't go down to raise this, uh, to pick this up, these didn't go down hardly at all, right here. So, if you look at the bottom teeth, these teeth stayed pretty much like they were, and these teeth intruded and went down to where you could see them. Now, how does that take place that way? Now, here's the model again. And you see these teeth went up to here somewhere. I think I've got a picture looking in from the other side of the mouth. I hope you do. Now, this was class one when we started over here uh, that's that's really good the and it's the way it's supposed to be really that's your first motor on the bottom and your first motor on this and this is supposed to come in contact and this is hitting here the wisdom teeth come in back back there and this is 
class one. Everything's fine except it's, it's got this deep bite and you'll have some crowding in the lower anterior teeth, but not all that much. And now let's uh, go on to the next slide. Look at it the other side. It's class one also with a deep, deep bite. And I want to show you, that's the upper arch. There's the lower arch. Got some crowding there. And here they are together again. And here is the young man came in and his upper teeth were completely away. And the reason he came back, he couldn't bite a sandwich in two. But that's why he uh, came back in, wanted to know what was, what was wrong. And there's the two arch wires that did the job. Let's see. Now here's what I wanted to show you. The lower anteriors were right up here against the roof of the mouth. I guess if he bit too pretty hard, they almost touched up here. Now they dropped down and these went up and we got a normal overbite, overjet when we finished. And here's the time that we did this. It was 1971. And that's this uh, picture, I think, when we got started on it. Now, that's all the pictures I had of this young man. So we have a molar tooth back here. We've got a molar tooth sitting in something like this. And we have a tube on it. And over here we have the lower anterior teeth that are Set, uh, setting up something. So maybe something like that. And we've got a wire that if this is the lower one we come out, you can drop this down and then you come all across here. And now when I raise this wire up and hook it to this tooth, right here, I raise it up and hook it to that. That tightens this spring right here. So after, when it's hooked up, you'll have a, a kind of a curvature like that. But this wire wants to be down here, so it pushes this down. <coughs> now, we're out in front, like the push down on that, that tooth's gonna rotate something like in here. So that's kind of like having your bracket to be out here. And that's kind of like having a wheel. Kind of like this. And we're pushing on this. Then this tooth would flare out in this direction. So when you get the space you need for the teeth, you've got to come in here with an auxiliary wire and tie that back. I mean, this, this wire ought to be something like that, and you go in here and tie that back so this wire cannot push out in this direction, and that keeps this fairly straight as it goes down. However, we didn't have that on this young man, and it didn't go down far enough to really change it that much. And now you have the upper arch would be setting something like this and we'd have the same we'd have something on it we'd be coming up here we go down and hook it onto the upper teeth and raise them up now there's just as much force when you push down over here there's just as much force on those to go up as it is for these to go down but this did not go down and on this one, to raise the teeth up, we'd have just as much force pushing these teeth down, but they didn't go down. They did touch on the mesial right in here, and the tooth kind of sloped away, like if you had a, um, drew this tooth off 
that thing is not riding very good. I don't know if this one's any better. But we have, you can have the roofs like that in the center roof. And when you push down on this right here, it would tend to rotate this in this direction. See? And so it did. It made the mesial cusp come in contact early. And then the chewing in here held those teeth right in the same place while it lifted these other teeth up and separated them. And that's what happens in here. So you know the reason. And so we took this knowledge that we got from that, that two little wires would open this guy's bite. And that's what we uh, started our intruding arch wire on that. Plus we put another auxiliary wire to keep it from spreading out as it went down like this. And we wanted to stop. Once we got room enough for the teeth, we stopped that. And it had to go straight down in that fashion. Uh, let's see if we've got another uh, video in here. All right. Those uh, teeth right in here now were down. You could see through the upper teeth. But and he got to where he couldn't even bite his teeth together. Let me go back through here. Now, after six months, then these teeth have moved very little. I don't see hardly anything. You know, and these actually have gone up in that much uh, distance in there that has happened. Uh, I've got all of my uh, deal again. We've had a lot of trouble here with this. Okay. So really this is all we need to uh, cover. We know this works now. I didn't have to have a double blind study to know this works. So we've taken this same principle now and put it on hundreds of other cases of deep bite. And I can show you deep bite cases till you're tired of looking at them that we can open their bite with this same principle, the same thing we are able to open the bites that way. You can look at the deep bite uh, cases we have on the video. We have uh, many deep bite cases there. And there will be uh, the ones later after that of all have this intruding arch wire on them and it works. And now we just level this thing out and let these teeth come back together and keep them with a... Uh, a little open bite there. So I'm going to say goodbye and uh, for the time being I hope you'll join our group and uh, subscribe to our channel. We'd like to have you and uh, let us hear from you. And I'm going to hang up right now and we'll finish this off.